Today is all about learning how we're going to design a magazine cover in Photoshop. So this is going to be a great lesson that you can follow through um, and you can jump around in it and take from it whatever you think is going to be the most important aspects. So let's jump right into Photoshop here. We are designing a magazine cover. If you have not watched the video already on how to analyze a uh, magazine cover to know what elements should go into, you should do that. It's all in the, uh, in the assignment criteria, um, but let's get right into it. It. So we're going to uh, open up Photoshop, we're going to go to File New, and we need to set up the page structure, the page size. So the width is going to be a standard piece of paper, which is 8.5, make sure you've cho chosen inches here, and it's going to be 11 uh, tall, and we're going to set the resolution to 300, which is the resolution you always use if you're ever creating something that might be printed. It just is a nice high resolution. Okay, so we're going to create that and it should look just like a piece of paper, which is perfect. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up margins. Now, the margins are very, very important in this project. So we are going to be setting up uh, quarter inch margins. And I know that uh, that's not very metric, but uh, we're going to deal with it. Okay, so we're going to make 0 0.25 inch margins all the way around. If your rulers here are not showing, go up to view and go to rulers, and that'll just turn them on and off. If your rulers are showing some really weird numbers, such as this, we just need to make sure that they are showing a measurement in inches. So we'll just right click it and choose inches. Now to make a margin or a guideline in this case, we're gonna take our mouse and just put it inside the ruler, drag over, and it'll give you a little preview of how big it is from the side of the page. Now in this case, 0 0.25, it's actually, it snaps. It may not be, you may not be able to get it exactly. In this case, I'm gonna set it to 0 0.253, might be as close as I can get by dragging it. Now, I'll do it from the top as well. Drag that down, go to 0 0.253. Now I have to do it on this side, so there's a little bit of math to do here. If we know that the width of the page is 8.5 inches, then to figure out what the margin should be on that side, it's 8.5 minus 0 0.25, which is 8.25. So that's what my margin should be there. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. And 8.25. In this case, I can get to 8.247. Now, if you want to be exact, you can. Let me just get rid of that margin by dragging it back into the ruler. You can actually go up to View and make a new guide. And that new guide, vertically, I can make it 8.25 inches. And it'll make it perfectly. Now, from the top, we know that the page is 11 so 11 minus 0 0.25 is 10.75. So I'll go to view, new guide. This is a horizontal one, 10 point, whoops, sorry, 10.75. That makes more sense. And I'm gonna click OK. So now I've got my margins. And basically what these mean is no matter what I do to design my page, let's say I wanted to make it some hideous color like a ugly yellow or something like that, no matter what I do, images can go to the edge of the page, but no text should ever go past that margin, okay, or that guideline. It's very important. So we're going to be making sure that you always have a nice, safe margin that you're not putting text past. Okay. So um, now there's uh, there's a lot of steps that are on the criteria. You can kind of lay it out however you want or do it in whatever order you want. I'm going to start with my title, and we talked about using the idea of a... Uh, of a, of a stylized title. So I'm going to call this magazine Nerdonomics. Um, and so it's going to be N-E-R-D and I'm just going to write that on its own. Now, the way I'm doing this is I literally just take my text tool, click wherever I want. Don't draw a box, just click. And then I can type like that. When I use my move tool, I can grab the text and move it wherever I want it to be. Just like that. I can also grab onto the corners and I can resize them like that. And when I'm done resizing them or adjusting them, you always just accept your changes with the check mark. 
Now there's other things you can do with your text as well. For example, if I take the text tool and I select it, now I can actually change things. Okay, another way to do that quickly is just double click on the T right here. So I'll just double click that, there we go. So I've got nerd. And I'm going to, I don't know, find a uh, different font here. We'll use that one right there. And maybe I'll make it even a little bit larger. I'll just grab that corner there. Depending on what version of Photoshop you're using, you may have to hold down shift because you never ever want to stretch text or squish text like that. It's just not a good habit to get into. So by holding down shift, depending on the version you're using, it'll just keep it constrained. Now, a few other things you can do. I'm gonna take the anomics and if you don't have this little panel here, you can do a lot of stuff with it. So to bring it up, just go window, character. And with the character, you can do these things. You can change your font. You can click and drag the size very easily. You can actually choose some of these and change the spacing. So you can actually make them kind of squish together a little bit. I'm not technically squishing it. I'm just changing how much space is in between each letter. Um, and if I have double spaces, I can change it uh, we'll have how much space is in between vertically with this one here. So I might just leave it with that, maybe make it a little bit bigger, knowing that my title should take up at least the top, probably, you know, 15, 20%. Maybe I'll bring that up a little bit more. And now I've got my title. Now I have not stylized it at all. I'm not going to get into that too much right now. Uh, but if I want to, I could select nerd. I could click on my effects panel here and, you know, do all sorts of stuff. Maybe I'd put a little pattern in there or something. There's lots of things you can do. Um, but we'll just leave that for now. Now you also have to get a photo, right? So I'm going to use this. This is an old photo. I think this is Mr. Griesbeck before he started shaving his head. Um, lots of ways to do selections. This is not a lesson on how to do a selection. Instead, I'm just going to show you how it's done. Um, or sorry, very quickly. So in this case, it's got a nice clean background. I'm going to use the quick selection tool and I think it's going to do a really good job. Um, you guys will be getting a picture of yourself or a friend or a family member. Okay. So you want to make sure it's a nice high resolution image. Uh, so take it with your phone. Um, you want to make sure that it is probably on a simple background. It'll make it easier to cut it out because we do want you to cut it out. Um, and just make sure that it's not blurry. Okay, so you may have to take a few versions of it until you get the version you want. So that looks pretty good right there. I might have to clean it up afterwards. I'm going to just copy that with Control C and I'll paste that in there. That looks pretty good. And again, if I need to resize it, I'll just grab the corner there and I can resize it depending on the version of Photoshop, you may have to hold down shift. The last thing you need to, or you ever wanna do though is like we talked about squish or expand like that. Just a bad habit to get into. So I'm going to resize it like that. One of the criteria is that your image should go above your text. So I think I've done that pretty nicely there. I might even bring the Nerdonomics title down just a little bit. And I know that I can extend that right out to my margins. So I might as well maximize that. There we go. Okay, so this is coming together pretty nicely. Uh, maybe I'll bring him down just a little bit. And I'm okay if his arm goes off the page. I think that's all right. It does ask for some sort of background that I can put in there. So there's lots of things you can do in there. I mean, technically you could leave it white. What I might do is uh, I might make a, uh, let's see, I might make a new layer right here. And then I'm just going to fill it with just any color. Okay, so I'll just pick, I don't know, this light red here, a little shortcut key. If you hold down the alt key when you're selected on this layer and you hit backspace, it will fill it with that color. So I've just filled it with that color pixels. Now, if you want a solid color, that works great. Okay, now other things, eventually I'm gonna have to go in there and clean that up, right? So I can actually maybe use my eraser tool, but I'll do that later. Um, if you wanna add a little more style to the background, you could go to that layer two and I could go to my effects panel and I don't know, maybe I'll put a gradient overlay in there and I get my gradient overlay here. That actually looks pretty good, right? I mean, I don't want to do anything ugly like that. Those are terrible, but uh, the one I had that it was a preset, 
kind of nice. It just kind of went from a white to a light gray. I'm kind of digging that. So I'll put that down there. And again, I have to stylize this uh, the, the title a little bit. Now, next thing we need to do is we need to come up with a color scheme. And this is very, very important. You'll know from the magazine analysis that the actual colors should be maxed out at about three. Now, usually we don't include black or white, but we need some highlight colors. So we use this website here called coolers.co. It's a fantastic site. Okay, I'm just gonna go to coolers and I'm going to start the generator here. And it's so easy. Literally just keep hitting spacebar and it'll just keep changing. If you see a color you kind of like that you wanna use on your magazine, maybe you like this color right here, lock it. And you can keep going and all these colors will work nicely with the magazine. Now my magazine has a very light color to it, so I kind of want darker colors. So maybe, uh, I don't know, I want some contrasting colors. Maybe this right here. Those are going to be my two colors. So these are my color codes. A63, D40, and 45, 4E, 9E. I'm going to take my snipping tool. And I'll just copy those over. There's lots of ways you can copy them. I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna paste them right inside my Photoshop. So those are gonna be my highlight colors. Um, so eventually I can start using those colors. For example, maybe I'll take Nerd here, double click it, and I will change the color to that red right there. And then maybe I will take Anomics and I will make it this color right here. Okay, so got things starting to come together a little bit here. I'm going to do one article for you guys and then I'm going to uh, just kind of let you start playing around. So the article is going to be how computers are taking over the world. Here's what we don't want to do. Let's just make that a little smaller. We'll make it black for now. What I don't want to see people do is just simply type and hit enter. Okay, it's just kind of a boring way to do things. I'm going to use this text called arsenal here and spread that out a little bit so we don't want to see this how computers are taking over the world okay so it looks okay but it's a little bit boring and again using your character panel you can change the spacing of it instead we're going to stylize it a little bit okay so this let's put that over there and uh, just so we make a reference to it. Let's make that a big old X to indicate we don't like that. Instead, we're going to do the following. I'm just going to put how and make that regular, make that a little bit smaller. You can see I'm just dragging this little T up here. It's a nice quick way to change the size. So I'm going to make, whoops, I'm going to make one called how. And then I'm gonna take my text tool and I'm gonna write computers in all caps. And by default, it's gonna make these all the same size and, and same uh, font, which is great. Um, and I'm gonna say are taking over the world. But now let's add some style to it. So I'm gonna make computers bold it's kind of the feature part there so let's go computers like that I might also make it that blue color just because that's my color scheme now and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger generally I don't want to go over top of, uh, of him too much at least with this color because the contrast isn't very good so eventually we'll you know you'll change how these are all laid out but we also talked about alignment and alignment's really important. So when you put stuff on the right side of the page, it should align to the right. So our taking over the world, I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller and it looks like it's size, let's see, size about 26. Maybe I'll actually type that in, say that's gonna be 26. And I'm gonna click this button here to right align it. Just like that. And then I'll make this one, I'm gonna make it match. So I'm gonna double click it. I'm going to make it 26, select there to change it or to accept it. And okay, so now I've got an article there that looks a little bit nicer and I, I could stay up, stylize it a little bit more. I could even, you know, add a little rectangle in there of some color. 
Maybe I just want to do that and I'll change that color to my red. Oh, I've got that, sorry, still as white because of the stroke on there. So it's going to take no stroke. There we go. Okay. And if I really like that, there's that rectangle. I could right click it and I could duplicate the layer and it'll just say, are you sure you want to duplicate it? And I'll say, okay. And then I could even use my arrow keys. There's so many things you can do in Photoshop that'll just speed up your process and you'll learn these by doing it. So I know I'm going kind of fast in some of this, but I know you can what, you know, you can replay this tutorial at any time, but here's a really nice little feature you may want to do. I'm going to select the how I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to select computers. I'm going to select are taking over the world. And I'm gonna hold down, or I'm actually gonna get these rectangles too. And if I can't get them over here, I'll just select here. And I'm gonna select all those layers. And now I'm gonna hit this button right here. Okay, this is the link button. And when I link it, they're all still separate layers, but now I can resize it and move it all around. So if I wanna put it down there, I can. I mean, it doesn't look very good for contrast, but it just links them together. So it's a really nice way to lay things out. Okay, there's lots more that we could go through on this, but as a starting point, I think that should be enough to get you going. Um, so the big thing from here on in is you ask for feedback. Ask friends, ask teachers, ask whoever. Just get people to look at it and say, hey, what do you think? Don't wait till the very end before you ask for your feedback. Okay, the earlier we can do it, the better.